My name is Shani George. I'm a psychotherapist and founder of Culture Minds Therapy. My role is to take therapy outside of the office and to you all at home. I bring to you the mind behind your favourite guests. We speak about mental health, therapy and self-care. zero to ten, mm-hmm. ten being extremely happy, how are you feeling right now? I'm a solid seven. Seven? Okay, mm, that's no, 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 no. Not, yeah, seven. 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 What were you going to say before then? I was going to say 6.8 because I feel like... 6.8, not even 0.5? No, nah, do you know what it is? Because yeah. seven is like, a okay, I'm getting to like the higher echelons of happy. Okay. But I don't feel like I'm getting to the higher echelons of happy. Okay. So 6.8 is nice. Okay, 6.5 is sad. Not sad, but it's a bit, oh. It's a bit meh. Yeah. Okay. And I'm a little bit above meh. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's good. Well, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Congratulations mm-hmm. on everything you've achieved. Thanks. Junior Bake Off. Mm-hmm. Mass Dancer. Mm-hmm. Where are we going with this? What do you want to talk about first, out of the two? Um, uh, we could talk about, we can talk about juniors. Okay. How yeah. was that experience? Um, I love it. I love the show because obviously I was a contestant before, yeah, 2017, and then I moved on to being a co-host on Bake Off the Professionals, so I did that now, filming that now as we speak, um, so that's, I've done that for six years now, wow. and then I think it was my second year, second year of Professionals, they asked me to be a judge on Juniors, and like, also because I have nephews as well, dealing with like little kids as well, it's like, I, they're just so like full happy, of energy yeah. and it's happy um so it was kind of like the first day of doing juniors was yeah i knew i was like kind of at home mm. yeah it's good fun wow that's nice and when you were eliminated yeah on the bake-off, you did say you're coming for that position yeah do you remember saying that i remember did you believe that or no. you just said it out of no emotions? do you know what it is it was like one of those things that like, i believed yeah but i just thought like i just said it because i just did mm. But I didn't know it would happen so soon. How soon in between when you left to when you then... Gone okay. to juniors. Yeah. So 2017 I left. Mm-hmm. And then first year of juniors was 20, 2019. So two years. Wow. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of mad actually. In that space, what were you doing? So once I got off the show, book deal, I wrote my first book. That's my second, second yeah, yeah. I bought my first book, Cheeky Treats. And then did my sort of like my own spin off six um, episode show with Channel 4. Um, Just like loads of side missions. Like I just got loads of opportunities and stuff. And to be fair, I was a bit shocked because I didn't win. Didn't win and it gets the final. So I even said before I got kicked out, or even when I started the whole process of Bake Off, I said, like, no matter what happens, I'm just going to do me. And if everyone likes me, they like me. If they don't, they don't. But I think that's what we love about you. You mm. are so authentic. Authentic. Yeah. You're and you're real, and we see that on camera. Yeah, and yeah. Interviewing you now, we've been laughing off camera, but we're still. <laughs> we're still <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're still yeah. here laughing on camera, and I guess that's what people love about you: mm. the fact that you're genuine, you're real, you're not putting up this persona yeah. as if you're someone that you're not. Thank you, but um, it's like, do you know what it is? I've seen people that do the whole like persona thing, which is fine because obviously you want to kind of sort of like defend yourself and you know, sometimes when you're like, you know, famous or whatever, there's a there's a you on screen, there's a you at home. But it's a bit long, isn't it? Mm. A CBA, like it's yeah. Yeah, having to keep up with this, oh I'm out, so I've got to put this persona yeah. on, oh I'm out, yeah. Because if you get caught lacking, like if you're like completely different to what you are on TV, it's just a bit rubbish. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong, of course when it comes to like professionals and juniors, I'm a little bit more professional in my day like, in that and compared to my day to day. But I like to think I still have the same narrative in my you know, my normal day to day life and on the show. Yeah. And especially like, you know what's funny? When I use slang, like just yeah. out and about, I say if I meet someone, they're like, oh, like, you're like London then, isn't it? Like, I'm like, 
What do you think of? Like, but you you did use slang on the Bake Off because you're like, oh, that's sick. Yeah, you were using slang. Yeah. But oh, I guess like... But you kind of tone... Yeah. And obviously editing. So they don't, they don't use every single nook and cranny that I do say because some of it's like, you know, mm. do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Mm. What was it like judging alongside, is it Ravnit? Yeah, Rav. Because yeah, you two sister. work well together. Mm. Like, I think the type of judge you are... Yeah. Come I on. won't say you're the... Go on. The critique one. Mm -mm. But you're, you're honest. Mm -hmm. And I think Ravnit kind of makes them feel, I don't know, um, happier within that honesty. Like, you give it to them. And then she'll say, oh, but you're really, really good. And Is it? Just, you give it to them. Is it? And then she'll be like, oh, but you're really, really good. Like, she'll kind of like... Yeah. Really? Yeah. But it's good, though, because you're honest. And you need that difference between each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, we work really well because... One, we have a relationship off of, of uh, not, you know, outside the tent. Okay. So we hang out, get food, like, bang on everything. So, I mean, yeah, we go out, it's fun. So it's nice to know that our relationship, our friendship, off or out of the tent reflects in the tent. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good match. Right. It's and it's nice to hear that you guys get along oh, outside the tent. Absolutely. Well. I mean... Imagine working on a TV show with someone you don't get along with. Mm. That's jarring. I haven't ha it hasn't happened to me yet, Sorry. but <laughs> but um, yeah, it just makes my life so much easier. Yeah, makes everyone's life so much easier. Definitely. What was it like judging young children? Because you got to be honest. Mm. You got to be sensitive to their yeah 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 to their needs. It's kind of like a fine line, isn't it? Mm. You can't swear on this show, can you? Well. If you want to say something that's a swear word, then... Okay, so in my head, this is the formula. I give them a poo sandwich, Okay. right? So you start off with like a uh, positive, yeah, which is the bread, right? And you give them a bit of critique or something that's not so good, which is the poo. And you top it off with, <laughs> with another slice of positivity. Yeah. And once you have that formula, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, he liked that a lot. But I could have, you know, improved okay. on this, but it's still good though. I think if you follow that formula, you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. That's a good formula. Positive, little bit of poo. <laughs> positive yeah. Again. And you'll be fine. I swear. Yeah. It works with adults as well. Mm. It works with everyone. I'll try it. I'll try it. Yeah. I'll try it on you in interviews. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. <laughs> what about the masked dancer? Mm-hmm. You were candlestick? Yeah. I must admit, you can dance. Where did you... Well... It's probably in our culture because you're Saint Lu Saint Lucian, right? No, Jamaican. <laughs> no, both. I'm both. I'm both. Sorry, guys. Saint Lucian, Jamaican. Mm -hmm. um, but have you always been a dancer? Has this always been your thing? Do you know what's mad, yeah? So, when I was in primary school, my mum always said to me that like, I've never had any rhythm. Like, none. Mm -hmm. Like, I could not dance for anything. And then, when we went to Jamaica, this is not, I'm even guessing. This okay. is, when we went to Jamaica, I think I was in year three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three or yeah, four. Went there, came back with that. I went to the mountains, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I came back and apparently I had mad rhythm, yeah. But like, <laughs> but also it's like, I've always been interested in like, you know, like all the Step Up films, mm. High School okay. Musical, You Got Served, mm. all films like that. I've always, you know. Been interested in it. Yeah, and I'll try a little, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. You want to show little, you? Your no, 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 no. It's, it's on TV, it's on okay. TV. So but, what were you doing in the mountains? That's the question. Oh, nothing. I was just eating good cooked food in it okay. and being with like my like family. Family. Okay. So I guess I don't know. It's just being around culture. Mm. Mm. Just sort of. It's kind of like Wakanda, yeah. Mm. Like I went there, had the heart shaped herb, and came back. Okay. You know yeah, you put, when you put it like that, you, maybe you needed there to go there to yeah. get that rhythm in you. Right. So when you did come back, mm -hmm. how long between then did you get the call for the master answer? Well, I mean, like that's like decades because remember I went oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. Um, cut that out. <laughs> um, okay, so mm -hmm. what was that like with the masked dancer? So does no one know who you are? Is nah. it you have to keep it a total secret? Yeah, pretty much. It's um, it's very like again a Marvel reference, like very secretive. No one knows. Even on set, no one knows who you are. You're wearing like. A mask, like you're wearing gloves. You, you can't wear this like this massive hoodie that says "Don't talk to me." It's it's very intense. Wow. Even like when I was practicing as well, 
the execs kept on asking me uh, if I was a professional. I'm not even lying. Oh, wow. I swear, like, I was like, no, like, mm-hmm. but do you know what it is? I do dance a lot with my, like, with my friends, yeah. and, you know, if you go to one little dance, and you get a little slow, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not a professional, but I just yeah. know how to... You got a rhythm now that you went to Jamaica, you come back. Yeah, okay. I had Sorrel in the look. Had <laughs> Sorrel? Yeah. Sorrel's actually quite nice, actually. Sorry. You're saying it like you... No, but I like Sorrel. You're a fraud, you know. How? You're, I, don't think, I don't think you have your Caribbean passport. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I don't have a Caribbean passport, but I'm from St. Lucia. This is what I'm saying. Uh, I can't even say that because I'm no, not St. Lucia. No, go on, go on. What were you going to say? Uh, I haven't that... t- tried Sorrel. You haven't? I have. How do you say that? Where did you get it from? My granny. Okay, fine. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. Okay. Um, yeah, why would you think I have a dry sorrow? Do I not look like a Caribbean? On a day to day basis, on a weekly basis, yeah? How much Caribbean food do you eat? Not a lot, to be fair, actually. This is what I'm saying. What did you say? This, huh? is, this is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, so how much Caribbean food do you eat? Quite a lot. I'd say like 20% of my diet is Caribbean. That's not that much. That's it, yes, it is. 25%. Mm, not that much. For a Jamaican and St. Lucian, 20, you should be like 50 50. I can't, what? I could, nah. There's, okay, yeah. I've got a question for you. Go how did you get into, well, I have researched your story, mm-hmm. but how did you get into baking? Because you sound like you like cultural food. Yeah, which yeah. Is the opposite from baking. Yeah. So, Tell us your story of how you got into baking. So everyone on my mum's side have like a, a outrageous sweet tooth, yeah. Okay. And every like every Sunday when I was around like I don't know fourteen to thirteen to fifteen, mum mm-hmm. and I will always go to Sainsbury's and get like you know those cheesecakes that come in like the pack, the mm-hmm. two the two slices. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then get the crumble pots, you know, prick it with the fork and put it in the, in the microwave for like two minutes. The sticky toffee pudding, mm, custard, apple cream, ice cream. Yeah. So after a while, it's kind of like, it's all good buying it, but like, I kind of want to learn how to make it. So I started to bake around 15, 16, you know, cakes, biscuits, breads, pastries. And then through sixth form, that's when I started to take it like really seriously. Um... I did. A, I was coming in with like massive like layered cakes, and my head of yeah, Mr. Carpenter. Um, if I ever write like an autobiography, he will be in it absolutely. <laughs> um, he saw one of my cakes and he said, "Do you want to do like a bake sale?" I was like, "Yeah." So I remember the first one we did, we made like a hundred cupcakes, and at the time I was like, what, seventeen, sixteen. Making a hundred cupcakes was a, It was. So labor intense. I could do that like, stuff in my sleep now, mm-hmm. but it was like, oh, different icing, different flavors. Oh, what did people gonna like it? I remember we sold out lunchtime, yeah. We sold out in like 10 minutes. Wow. Mad. And he, will, and he goes, How about this? Do you want to do that again, but double the batch? So reinvest the money in some more ingredients and double the batch. I was like, Okay, cool. And then, like, I think like two, three weeks after, we did another one that was like labels and everything. Sold out again. And then after that one, he said to me, would you ever apply for the Great British Bake Off? Oh, wow. So this is when I was 17. Mm. I was like, oh, do you know what? I watch it all, I watched it all the time. So say if I was like baking at home, I would have Bake Off on my iPad. I was like, okay, cool. I might try a little thing. So when I finished sixth form, I applied. Didn't get it the first time around. Okay. And then my, when I went to uni, my second year, was it second year? I'll be honest, uni for me, I loved it, but yeah. after a while, it just got a bit boring. Okay. So um, I needed something different. Mm-hmm. And then I applied for it the second year of uni. And then that summer, between second year and third year, I did Bake Off. And then, wow. yeah. So it sounds like it was a hobby of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you were just inquisitive, wanted to know how to bake the food, you bake the cakes you were eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grew to love it. Mm-hmm. Mr. Carpenter was like, do you want to do it? Do you want to bake some cupcakes? You yeah. did it, you sold it. Yeah. And then from there, you applied for a British Bake Off and yeah. you got on it. Yeah. What was that like? Um, get, Getting on the show. Mm. I remember when I got the call, yeah, that I'm going to be on the show, yeah. I remember I was doing like, um, was um, rehearsing for like our theatre making uh, performance. And then um, I got it, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, and what was so nice, yeah, because Goldsmiths Uni, yeah, has like, it's like massive, like, 
green patch yeah but the sky was like all different colors like i was going into the multiverse it was, it was really weird mm -hmm. i was like this is it this would be sick so for like a two days i was gassed but then also you got kind of knock into the perspective there's 10 weeks you have to do with the show if you go all the way mm -hmm. so it's great getting on the show but how yeah, well you're going to do it mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying um it was the most stressful thing i've ever done in life wow facts how did you manage that stress crying uh <laughs> crying mom i can't do it i can't do it um yeah i think the first week i was i was a mess mm. um one i was the youngest at the time the youngest boy to ever go on the show from hackney you know there was there was loads of things that kind of they kind of just highlighted and obviously me in my head as well because i'm i you know i tend to overthink sometimes um, I thought I have to, I'm not just representing myself, I'm representing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I remember my first bake, it was, um, I made an apple crumble loaf. I mean, I thought that thing was shit hot, do you know what I mean? But Paul was just like, it's a bit boring. So and I took it mad personal, innit? So like, bro, I was in pieces, like, it was rough. And, uh, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, like the chaperones, everyone had to talk to me, like just to calm down and just like, you can do it. And then the technical, I did okay. And it was the showstopper, so this is the first week. And I made like these stack of pancakes, but it was like an illusion cake. So it was a cake, but it looked like pancakes. Oh. And then um, I knocked that out of the part. I just, I bodied it. Mm -hmm. But I bodied, like smoked it up. Like it was just, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm through, man, I'm through. <laughs> when I looked, I was like, yeah, I'm through, I'm through, yeah. I'm through. And then, like, as the weeks progress, you get more confident. Because okay. you, sort of you sort of learn how it works. Talking to the camera people, knowing the kitchen, knowing the equipment. So, yeah. And then I got kicked out week eight. Oh, wow. Mm. In regards to when you're on the show, mm -hmm. is there a lot of duty of care for your mental health and well being? Massively. Okay. Because one, you don't really know what's going to happen after. Mm -hmm. And also, the production company who I work for now, Love Productions, they just generally care about people. Do you know what I'm saying? It's in the name. Um, yeah, yeah. Because the worst thing is, is like going on TV show. You know, for a lot of people, going on TV show from, a, from an outside perspective, oh, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. You go on the show, completely different ball game completely different ball game, loads of stress. It's um, very oh, surreal. Um, but yeah, there was loads of duty of care. Okay. Absolutely. And one thing I love about you, mm -hmm. just in regards to being on TV and doing what you do, is you're very private with your social life, should I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know you're doing big things within your career, but mm -hmm. you're socially, mm -hmm. you're very private. Yeah. What made you do this interview with me today? Um. Because you seem genuine, like point blank. Thank you. Um, and also, I tried to refrain from doing loads of interviews solely because, I'm be honest, like a lot of people just talk for no reason. Okay. Like you do, you do a hundred interviews saying the same thing. What's the point? I'm, I get, I get. You know, you want to be relevant and stuff like that. But like, how many times are you gonna say the same thing? Like, not much for you can change in like mm -hmm. a week. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I just don't like talking for the sake of talking. Okay. And also, I talk bare, like loads, vibes of them, yeah? But like, who can like, do you know what I mean? Like, you've yeah. got to protect yourself a little okay. bit. Yeah. But that's good though. And I guess that's why you are where you are. Yeah. Because you're private with certain things. Yeah. And you're public with other things. Absolutely. And you know when to talk, when not to talk. There has to be a balance. Because, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how long, I don't know how long this will last. Right, and I had a life before it, and I'm sure I'm gonna have a life after it. If you expose your whole life to the the pit of you know the industry, mate, like there's nowhere to hide in it. There's nowhere to just relax. Mm. That's very true. What does mental health mean to you? Lord, Lord. <laughs> I know you've been thinking about this question. This question, I'm thinking you're stuck in a hot screen. No, I'm afraid of it. What does, uh, it mean, what does mental health mean to Liam? Do you know what? I don't have a, 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 a very good definition of it, but like in my head, in terms of mental health, nine times out of 10, nearly every day, yeah, I'd be like, are you okay to myself? Like, are you okay? And if it's a yes, 
and cool. Mm -hmm. And if it's a no, if it's a no, I ask why. But also, with mental health, I've I've been blessed here yeah, from I was young mm -hmm. to have like a really good core of people around me. So whenever like I'm upset or frustrated, is you know my mum's always taught me to never keep things bottled up. Um, even my guy friends, you know, stereotypically like my name don't we don't talk about emotions and like, what are you playing for? And that. like me and my boys, like all of us, we might not cry. Mm -hmm. Some of us might do. Yeah, it has happened in the past, but we are very vocal and very um, we are, we express our emotions to each other. That's good. You don't really hear that in friendship groups, especially men. Yeah, like expressing no, not your at all. emotions and talking about how you how how you feel. Yeah. Have you ever struggled with your mental health? Absolutely. Uh, but twenty twenty was rough for a lot of people because obviously COVID. Mm -hmm. But I was going through a breakup at the time. Okay. Um, going through a breakup in lockdown is the worst thing ever. It was a long distance relationship, wasn't it? Yeah. How the hell do you know this? <laughs> <That's my reason. laughs> oh my god. That is crazy. Wait, do you know, I've done my research. Obviously, you're a guest on the show, so mm -hmm. I want to research and kind of try to dig and find that information. But yeah, I did read that it was a long distance relationship. So mm -hmm. continue sharing. Yeah, that was rough. Um, so she was like, well, yeah, I'm not mentioning her name. Mm -hmm. She um, was like, was my first girlfriend. Okay. And um, when you're, you know, when you have your first love, you feel that's that's it. You're, I know. you're out of the game. I'm done. Yeah. I'm tired. See you on the streets. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm not cold no more. Yeah. yeah. And then when we broke up. How long were you together for? It's like a year, maybe. Okay. When we broke up, that, bro. Rough. Rough. How was it rough? How was it rough? Mm. This is the first time in my life I've spoken about this relationship. Like, Thank like, you. That's fine. Um, you know, like, oh. It was so peak. Like, I, I, I just felt out of control. Okay. Not in a sense, like, I should, like, you know, in a sense of, like, I must know what she's doing, blah, 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 blah. It's, like, emotionally, like, one minute I'm happy, mm -hmm. I'm fine. The next minute I'm, like, I just didn't know what to do with myself. And then every time I used to think about her, like, you know, I used to get this weird feeling on my stomach. Like, it was bad. Like, I used to be, like, in my room all the time. Like, just, yeah. I even, like, I spoke to... Because I didn't know... What, I, I mean, I speak to my friends about it, my family and that, but I, what I did say to myself, I feel like I need to talk to someone that doesn't know me because no matter how much advice your friends and family can give you, they're, and how like they want to be neutral in the situation, they are slightly going to be on your side with things. Whereas if you talk to someone that does not know you at all, yeah. So I had like a, what's this, like a, what's a counsel, not counsellor. Therapist? Therapist. Yeah. Had one throughout the whole lockdown. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, How was that? It was sensational, actually. Um, he taught me is you know running through certain scenarios what happened, and he just said, you know, it's all about perspective, you know, and me being twenty two at the time, I was twenty two. Telling a twenty two year old what about perspective, mm -hmm. is a bit difficult, isn't it? But but what lockdown did teach me is to like, we had a lot of stillness in lockdown, so I had a lot of time to process things. And perspective, which is really like, sort of stunk into me after a while. Um, but yeah, 2020 was the worst year of my life. Absolutely, oh. absolutely. And was it just the relationship breakup or was it other people, well, COVID and... I mean, I, I, I wanna be honest, like, of course a lot of people lost their lives and stuff, people got sick, I, I caught COVID as well, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like a reset. Yeah, many people said that. It was kind of like a reset. It was nice to be like, okay, cool, got this time. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Mm. And then after, we go again. Um, so yeah, okay, yeah, 2020 was rough. Okay. So after 2020, we're in 2023 now. Mm -hmm. How have you been taking care of your mental health and well-being from what you learned from your... Not taking any fucking shit. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but it's true though. You need to yeah, have boundaries and know yeah. what you will and will not tolerate. So I guess there's a lot of that. Mm. There's a lot of that, and I feel like looking at myself when I was twenty in comparison to now, I mean, be twenty five. 
I, there was a lot of, I was very naive. Mm. Like, you know, I thought in my, you know, I come, la, 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 yeah, 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 everyone's nice, everyone's cool, la, 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 la. And then, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I definitely have like my barriers, just like, there's, there's levels. Boundaries, yeah. There's my boundaries, yeah. sorry, there's levels to it now. Um, I still like, I'm, I feel like I'm very still like, you know, open on that, but mm -hmm. I just don't take the mic. Okay. You know? What would you say to a young black boy who wants to be where you are today and is maybe struggling to find himself? Um, easier said than done, yeah, mm -hmm. but just don't take no for an answer. Okay. Because a lot of people, when I started to bake, family members, even friends, uh -huh. why are you making cake for? Mm. That's a bit, bit weird. Like, what? Blah, 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 blah. But then when they start seeing things like this, and they start seeing me in things like this, yeah. oh my God, yeah, yeah, I remember, do you remember that cake that you made? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, and people will only see the portrait or the picture, like, after you painted it. Mm. They're not gonna be there when you're like, in the, the gallery for ages with loads of different paints trying out stuff. When it's up there on the walls, that's when they really care. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. That was like, wow, oh my God. How, how was it writing? <sighs> you know, you, you know about Instagram, like yeah. yeah? You know when you did the motivational videos with the sad music in the background? Yeah. That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing, I'm messing, I'm messing. How was it writing this football? Um, it was really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, because this one I went half savoury, half sweet. Okay. Um, and to start with writing that I have, I kind of write how I talk. Mm. So like the rest, don't get me wrong, there's some things in the recipe but where you have to say very like point black or very like clean. Yeah. But like, you know, the, the introduction, very like vibe and like colloquial, like very like my voice. Um, it, I don't think it was that stressful. I wrote, I, I mean, I wrote a dissertation. So there's basically a dissertation yeah. with colours. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah, you're right about that. Um, and with nice pictures. Yeah. And um, my team as well, photographers, the great directors, like the, the publishers as well, they're all great, so, yeah. Would we find any more? Are you going to write any more books, cookbooks? <sighs> pending? Pending. Okay, pending. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm going to give away, One but yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. was, you went, you studied drama mm -hmm. in school, right? Mm -hmm. So. Was baking always the profession you wanted to go down, or was there another dream? I want to be in the MCU. I want to okay. be, yeah, I want to be Spider Man. Well, not Spider Man, but I, would, I want to be. I, you know, my original dream yeah. was to become an actor. Oh wow! But you can, you still can become an actor within. Oh, your, absolutely! Yeah, okay. absolutely. But then I found my passion for food. Okay. And then me having some sort of dra dramatic drama background, and then me liking food kind of helps me get into this career that I have today. Um, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Mm. People do ask me that question quite a bit, like, would you ever do, like, acting? I'm like, yeah, if it's the right. Opportunity came. Yeah, I mean, I've had a few auditions, and I've, mm. some of them I've said no to because just no. Okay. But if the right thing comes, yeah. absolutely. What would be the right thing? Marvel. Okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's the ladder. Yeah. Or, like, a cheeky little, like, if they rebooted Johnny English. Okay. <laughs> That was yeah. sick. <laughs> okay, that's that's interesting. Well, the door's always open. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got a great career now, and in the future. So just keep being you. Keep being your true self. Thank you. Because it's inspiring, and my daughter loves you. I yeah, love yeah, you. yeah. Um, I think the work you're doing is great. Thank you. So, do you have any questions for me? What made you want to become like a TV presenter slash host? Oh, you're speaking out to existence. I'm actually not... I think you are that, though. Oh, are you? Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> do you know what it was? I'm a therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I spent over 10 years in that industry, clinical industry, NHS industry. And um, I wanted to just take therapy outside of the office and yeah. into a new world. So really come behind that desk. And I enjoy talking to people. So I started off with interviewing. And then it just opened the doors to writing for magazines, talking on TV, radio. And yeah. I just grew to love the creative industry and just being creative with my role. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into it, in a nutshell, essentially. What's the dream? The dream? Oh, wow. The dream would be... <laughs> what are you You're the so dream, funny. The dream would be to be in 
expert on TV. Mm-hmm. So work on TV shows, being an expert as a therapist. Um, becoming a editor in chief for a magazine and kind of linking my interviews with that. Sick. So, um, so doing interviews, linking it to the magazine, cover shoots and so forth. So that would be the the two biggest dreams. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds wicked. That's a good question. Thank you. See you at the top. Yeah. See you there. <laughs> Can I get an autograph? Yeah. There you go. Let's look at a pen. There we go. On a scale of zero to ten, how are you feeling now? Seven. Still a seven? Do you know what? You made me reflect. Okay. You so has it, has it gone down? No, but it's, it's a... It's what was a, it before, actually? 6.8. Okay, it's just going to say, okay, that's fine. I'm a seven now. You made me think about things. Okay. Is that a good thing? Yes. Okay. What yeah. things have I made you think about? My ex-girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not all bad. Okay. Um how like the people around me are really sensational people mm-hmm. um and i'm actually doing all right of course but you know what though hold on let me right, let me sign this first yeah no but keep talking do you know what it is i'm not going to keep talking because i know i'm like i will you forget no no, no i'll sign this yeah but yeah. i'll sign what i'm saying okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay sign it and then um tell me what you because it sounds like you're going to talk about what you, how you feel about yourself. Yeah. Are you left-handed? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. S-H-A-R. Yeah. Cool. And I put my daughter's name as well. What's your daughter's name? A-M. 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 Yeah. I. I. Y. Y. A-H. A-H. Yeah. Thank you. Big love. Uh, keep making. <laughs> she likes bacon, actually. Her favourite cake is lemon cake. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's your favourite cake? You said chocolate cake, didn't you? Chocolate. It honestly it really Thanks. depends on the day. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, thank you. Nice. So, yeah, you said, um, when you said you're actually doing all right, mm-hmm. what did you think before? Sometimes I have a bit of self-doubt. Okay. No, was it called imposter syndrome? Is that okay. a real thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially, like, the first couple of years when I did professionals and juniors, like, I used to be like, say if I, it's completely natural and normal, yeah, if you forget a word or you hit, uh, forget your line or... Um, you miss your mark or a pop in, you know, when like uh, the host goes into talking, to, uh, goes in to talk to like a chef or whatever. Mm-hmm. If they're not ninety percent good for me, uh, I feel like shit. Like, am I actually like fraud in this whole career? Um, yeah, I felt I used that especially when I was younger. Like, mate, I had it bad. Mm-hmm. But do I actually deserve to be here? Wow. Yeah, I had that a lot actually. Um, Where did that come from? Just me having the case of me overthinking all the time. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Not much now, but I used to overthink so much. And then it'll get to a point where I'll make like false narratives in my head mm-hmm. and situations that actually haven't happened yet, but I convince myself they are going to happen. But then like, one day, I know there's, there's no gas here. One day I was like, tell you who said it to me. I remember I was going through like a whole like, you know, I was talking about like, you know, relationships and just feeling shit, yeah. And then my cousin, I, I face out my cousin pretty much every day, call him or either two. Mm-hmm. He said, Carlos, like, bro, like, you're Liam Charles, bro. Mm-hmm. And then like, it just, something switched for me. Oh, wow. And then I was like, bro, I actually, yeah, I'm like, don't get me wrong, I still have my self-doubts now, but yeah. that for me always... Was that switch? Yeah, because like, people can like, give you advice on things and say, you know, how to stay your life and stuff like that. But quite frankly, you kind of, well, you, you, ultimately you have to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to find it in yourself to actually be like, okay, I need to ignite that flame again. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, it's rough, but it's oh, great wow. at the same time. That's interesting. So I've made you think about that. Well, Anything else? Um, That's made you 
a seven. There is definitely something else. Um, it, if I'm honest, um, I don't know how I feel about this coming in, uh, being in the interview or not, but I'm just going to say anyway. Okay, so we can stop now. No, it's fine. Okay. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel like I do, I do a lot for this industry. Yeah. Yeah. Representation, like not tick box shit. I'm talking like I actually do this, right? And you know the whole thing about flowers. I'm not expecting. I'm like, I, like no, okay. I'm not expecting for everyone to be like, he's great, he's great, because then your head will become big and you'd be kind of be living in cloud nine sort of thing. Mm. But I'm like, there's a point now. Where I'm kind of like, I've been in it for six years now. And for a lot of people, especially me being from where I'm from and stuff like that, people don't survive for six years. Mm-hmm. Especially being on the shows that I'm on. I'm kind of like... What's going on? Do you know what I'm saying? But I get myself, sometimes I do have those thoughts, but then I also I have to remember that like, it's fine. Like, if, you, if you don't want to give me my flowers, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Because I will grow my own flowers in my garden. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I guess also as well, you're di- you're different from what we see, especially within the industry. You're you're baking, and you've got so far from from just baking as a hobby. Yeah. And I guess when that's different, sometimes people may not look to that and think, "Oh, let's give him these flowers." Absolutely. But f- from me to you, don't let that stop you. Oh no, absolutely not. Because you're incredible. You know, you've yeah. done it. Like I was saying off camera, you've done incredible things. Yeah. And just just keep going. The sky's the limit. Yeah, no. We're gonna see each other at the top. Absolutely, but yeah, no. That that it was a it was a big thing in my head. Twenty twenty two. Like I was is weird. Like I never seek validation from anyone. Mm. That's what. That's how I'm here now. Because I just do. I don't care. But it, there was like a couple of weeks here yeah, where I was like, bro, like mm. man's been doing this. Like yeah. Like what's going on? Like what? Mm. What? Like huh? I'm confused. And then I get some of my colleagues, some of my peers, I got sent a few screenshots of messages about me and stuff like that. Never met these people before in my life. A, B, and C was said. And you know, people say like little cheeky stuff. But like not even like, oh he's rubbish at his job. He's always like, oh, oh he bakes cakes though, and like, oh he's the bake off boy. Like, do you know what I'm saying? But it's just like and I speak to people, you know, that I do get along with in the industry and stuff. Like that. And even my friends and family, they're like, bro, they, they're saying that because they want to be in your position. Um, in my opinion, there's enough for everyone to eat. Stop being selfish. Mm. I know it's, don't get me wrong, it is a bit of a competition. Yeah, you know, competition is healthy, facts. Yeah. Mm. But also, everyone can eat. Just cut everyone a slice. Mm. That's why you cut cake. You don't eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Because you share it. You share it. You share it. Don't, yeah.